Hello, everyone. John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate, serving Southern Ontario, based out of the Niagara region. Thank you once again for tuning in and watching. This week, I thought I should drill down on price points and kind of where the average price is going, the national price in Canada, uh, based on some fundamentals and some chart patterns and uh, kind of some important data that's relevant to that price or to the average price. Now, I'm not going to touch on timeline in this video. If you've watched previous videos, uh, I think last year I called for 2024 to 2025 for buying opportunities. That's not the bottom. I don't think I've ever called the bottom, but the bottom is going to be sometime after that. But uh, I still stick to that timeline. But today is going to be all about price, where it's going. This is kind of a best case scenario for sellers. I guess worst case for buyers. But uh, again, trying not to be too extreme one way or another. But again, it would be more on more on the conservative side. Um, but anyway, let's get into the numbers. I'm going to go through them. And at the end, I will summarize them all to kind of get an average um, price point where we will be or a loss of price. Starting with the good old head and shoulders. Now, this is the most extreme one I'm showing today. And of course, we have a real nice head and shoulders pattern forming. Yeah, right now we're at 668,000 average price for the national average that is. And of course, someone corrected me on Twitter the one day and they said, it's not actually a head and shoulders until you break that neckline. Um, now the neckline, once that's broken, you know, sky's the limit. If So I guess if that does break, we will be going to 464 based on this pattern. But uh, anyway, we've already dropped 176,000 and possibly once we break that neckline, we'll have that under other 176,000 to go uh, with a price of 464,000 for the average price point. So pretty extreme there, hard to think about that. But again, it wasn't that long ago. That brings us to like 2017 or something or 2018. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next chart. This is the good old mean reversion. The premise is, or the theory is, everything, you know, they always revert to the mean, which makes sense. We've gone to these extreme highs so that I could see it reverting to the long-term average or mean. And you'll see here, if we just touch the mean, um, you know, next year, end of 2024 into 2025, we would be at 586, 571 if we reached it sooner. And of course, you don't just hit the mean. If you look at history, you go below it and then you come back up and you go back down anyway. So I'm looking at there about 540,000 for just dipping below the mean um, by a normal amount before we would re recover back up to that uh, by 2026, 2027, maybe, maybe later. But as you can see, fairly conservative on my mean reversion method here. Nothing extreme. Of course, you could say it's going to drop a lot lower. Um, but again, I, I use the 540,000 mark there to be a little bit more conservative. And one of my favorite, the Fibonacci retracement here. Um, I started the move from uh, 2019 or so. It looks like there was a really good move starting then. You could say, okay, we start at 2020 when the pandemic hit, but then you could say we could also go back to 2015. So again, I think a good midpoint there for the start of the move. And you can see our retracement levels there. The major one, 61.8, would bring us to 595,000. And the next level down there would be 535,000. Now, there are Fibonacci extensions that go even below that 455,000. But again, these are extreme cases. I'm staying conservative today. And uh, yeah, so between 535 and 595. So let's say 565 uh, based on this chart. Next, I want to get into income levels and median and household incomes and whatnot. It is very important. Um, unfortunately, in Canada, we don't have median national price reporting and we don't really have any average household income after tax reporting either so i'm comparing median household income to average house prices but again i'm using consistent data back to 2008 or so so it is relevant um, but if you're comparing average household incomes to average house prices you know uh, under five percent or so is healthy actually under four percent is healthy so these are a little bit higher but again we're using it to get kind of an average or a baseline that we can revert to just a quick chart before i get into the data on that here is the average house price uh, the increase since uh, 2007 
And uh, I put 2007 as the base year, 100%. And of course, we're what, 180 something or 185% or 85% over the uh, 2007 levels. And of course, with income, we're barely around 130 or 30% over what uh, the average family was bringing in. So of course, you can see house prices since 07 have really outpaced by a lot uh, income. Now, looking at it, when it compares to average house prices, you can see back in 2007 or 2008, it was the first data point, and this was above the mean here, it was 5.3 times the median household income, uh, the average prices. And going forward, we moved up to 6.4 times the average household, and that wasn't even a bull market back then. In real estate, that was just an average market. You could buy homes for you know 250000 uh, in my area back then, uh, decent homes. And of course, it remained consistent up until 2014 or 2015 at six and a half times. And then once we hit 2017, it jumped up to 7.6 times the median household income. Then in 2020, after the lockdowns ended, house prices really started to jump. We were eight times and we reached 11 times the median household income for average prices in Canada at the peak in February 2022. Right now, we're currently sitting at 8.7 times the median household income. Very unhealthy. Of course, as you know, nobody can afford a house right now. Um, that's not news to anyone, but that's where we're at, 8.7. So it needs to come down significantly or median household incomes need to go up one or the other. So just to get back to kind of a long term average prior to these, you know, crazy real estate moves in 2017 or so, we would need to come back to around six and a half times. And you can see there, uh, there's 6.8 and six and six times. And those are based on increased incomes too. So those aren't based on our incomes right now of around 75,000 after tax. So with significantly increased salaries, you're looking at, you know, house prices between 540 and 580, just to keep it at a 6.5 times the uh, median household income. Of course, I will be summarizing this all at the end. So uh, we'll, we'll go back over all these numbers then. Now I'm going to move on to other things, comparing real estate with the general inflation, whether it's the Bank of Canada or, you know, food and whatnot. So let's look at how it fares there and we'll kind of do a correction to say, OK, if house prices were to come back in line with the rest of the inflation, where would they be? So I used 2015 as the starting point for to measure the inflation from then. I could have went back further. It would have been very similar numbers, or I could have went a little bit further ahead, but it seemed like a good point with the data I had then. And of course, I wanted to include a lot of things um, in this that were relevant. So since 2015, real estate in Canada has increased 67% on average. And comparing that to other major items or purchases and expenses in our life, uh, you can look at the CPI here. Now, this is right from the Bank of Canada website. The CPI from 2015 to today, so 2023, is 24.2%. So 24% as they report it. Kind of find that hard to believe when they juggle those bas basket of goods because the median income has gone up 25% in the same time. So supposedly, according to the Bank of Canada, our median income is similar or just a little bit higher uh, than the regular inflation. And I think that uh, most Canadians would argue that point uh, very strongly. Food has gone up 31% in that time frame. The TSX has gone up 33% in that time frame. Uh, new cars have gone up on average 35% or so. I had to research many different cars to kind of get a number. It was between 30 and over 40, actually. Used cars from the CarGurus data went up 45% since 2015, which also is very believable. And of course, there is the real estate we talked about at 67%. Now let's take a look to see if real estate could come back in line uh, with the rest of the inflation, where would it be price-wise? So right now we're currently at $668,000 for the average house. If we brought it back to used car prices, uh, we would be at $582,000. We bring it back to uh, in line with inflation there. That would be actually a real nice target. Let's bring it back in line with inflation. As reported by the Bank of Canada, the average house price would be just under 500000 And of course, we have the other ones there. They're all in that uh, low to mid $500,000 price range. 
So now let's summarize these and kind of get an average uh, to see where we will be at in you know 12 to 18 months or 12 to 24 months or whatever the timeline will play out to be. So here we are at the top, the head and shoulders, 464, mean reversion, 540,000, the Fibonacci, 565, median household income ratio, 552, and the average inflation would be 540,000. And the middle column shows the losses from our present or current prices as of July 2023, as reported by Korea. And they range anywhere from 103,000 to 176,000. And the dollar losses from the peak range from 250 to 350,000. Now let's look at the average or the total average prices. We're looking at a target price of 532 for the average household or the average house in Canada, which would bring us to 2019 to 2020 levels, which isn't really that extreme. Current losses from now until the so-called bottom would be $136,000 or 20% from current price points. And the total loss from the peak would be approximately $284,000 or 35% loss from the peak. We're currently sitting at 18% from the peak, so it's not even double of what it would be now. And very believable, again, this is very conservative numbers based on things playing out well in the general economy and just having that normal correction. Things could obviously get a lot worse. I have made uh, videos before saying that what could happen, but this is, again, just a conservative method based on sound data and fundamentals and pretty much using basic math. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments as always, and until next week, I'll see you then.